get a copy from the Christian. Martin, Martin. the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, on this most holy, sacred night, in which our Lord Jesus Christ passed over from death to life, the Church calls upon her sons and daughters scattered throughout the world to come together to watch and to pray. If we keep the memorial of the Lord's Paschal Solemnity in this way, listening to his word and celebrating his mysteries, then we shall have the sure hope of sharing his triumph over death and living with him in God. Let us pray. O oh God, who through your Son bestowed upon the faithful the fire of your glory, sanctify this new fire, we pray, and grant that by these Paschal celebrations we may be so inflamed with heavenly desires that with minds made pure we may attain festival, festivities of unending splendour through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. All time belongs to him and all ages to him be glory and power through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. By his holy wounds, and glorious wounds, may Christ the Lord guard us and protect us. Amen. Amen. Amen.
May Christ, the light rising in glory, dispel the darkness of our hearts and minds. the light of Christ. Thanks be to God.
Let them exalt the hosts of heaven. Exalt, let angel ministers of God exalt. Let the trumpet of salvation sound aloud our mighty king's triumph. Be glad, let earth be glad, as glory floods her, ablaze with light from her eternal King. Let all corners of the earth be glad, knowing an end to gloom and darkness. Rejoice, let Mother Church also rejoice, arrayed with the lightning of his glory. Let this holy building shake with joy, filled with the mighty voices of the peoples. Therefore, dearest friends, Standing in the awesome glory of this holy night, invoke with me, I ask you, the mercy of God Almighty, that he who has been pleased to number me, though unworthy among the Levites, may pour into me his light unshadowed, that I may sing this candle's perfect praises. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, with ardent love of mind and heart, and with devoted service of our voice, to acclaim our God invisible, the Almighty Father, and Jesus Christ, our Lord, his Son, his only begotten, who for our sake paid Adam's debt to the eternal Father, and pouring out his own dear blood, 
wiped clean the record of our ancient sinfulness. These then are the feasts of Passover, in which is slain the Lamb, the one true Lamb, whose blood anoints the doorposts of believers. This is the night when once you led our forebears, Israel's children, from slavery in Egypt and made them pirates see. This is the night that with a pillar of fire banished the darkness of sin. This is the night that even now throughout the world sets Christian believers apart from worldly vices and from the gloom of sin leading them to grace and joining them to his holy ones. This is the night when Christ broke the prison bars of death and rose victorious from the underworld. Our birth would have been no gain had we not been redeemed. O oh, wonder of your humble care for us, O oh, love, O oh, charity beyond all telling, to ransom a slave you gave away your son. O oh, truly necessary sin of Adam, destroyed completely by the death of Christ. O oh, oh, happy fault that earned so great, so glorious a Redeemer. O oh, 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 truly blessed night, worthy alone to know the time and hour when Christ rose from the underworld. This is the night of which it is written, the night shall be as bright as day, Dazzling is the night for me, and full of gladness. The sanctifying power of this night dispels wickedness, washes faults away, restores innocence to the fallen, and joy to mourners drives out hatred, fosters concord, and brings down the mighty. On this, your night of grace, O Holy Father, accept this candle, a solemn offering, the work of bees and of your servants' hands, an evening sacrifice of praise, this gift from your most holy church. But now we know the praises of this pillar, which glowing fire ignites for God's honor a fire into many flames divided, yet never dimmed by sharing of its light. For it is fed by melting wax, drawn out by mother bees to build a torch so precious. O oh, truly blessed night, 
When things of heaven are wed to those of earth and divine to the human. Therefore, O Lord, we pray you that this candle, hallowed to the honor of your name, may persevere undimmed to overcome the darkness of this night. Receive it as a pleasing fragrance and let it mingle with the lights of heaven. May this flame be found still burning by the morning star, the one morning star who never sets, Christ your Son, who coming back from death's domain has shed his peaceful light on humanity and lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Now that we have begun this solemn vigil, let us listen with quiet hearts to the Word of God. Let us meditate on how God, in times past, saved his people. And in these, the last days, has sent us his Son as our Redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was a formless void. There was darkness over the deep, and God's spirit hovered over the water. God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw that light was good, and God divided light from darkness. God called light day, and darkness he called night. Evening came, and morning came, the first day. God said, let there be a vault in the waters to divide the waters in two. And so it was. God made the vault and it divided the waters above the vault from the waters under the vault. God called the vault heaven. Evening came and morning came, the second day. God said, let the waters under heaven come together into a single mass and let dry land appear. And so it was. 
God called dry land earth, and the mass of waters seas. And God saw that it was good. God said, let the earth produce vegetation, seed bearing plants and fruit trees bearing fruit with their seed inside on the earth. And so it was. The earth produced vegetation, plants bearing seed in their several kinds, and trees bearing fruit with their seed inside their several kinds. God saw that it was good. Evening came and morning came, the third day. God said, let there be lights in the vault of heaven to divide day from night and let them indicate festivals, days and years. Let them be lights in the vault of heaven to shine on the earth. And so it was. God made the two great lights, the greater light to govern the day the smaller light to govern the night and the stars. God set them in the vault of heaven to shine on the earth, to govern the day and the night and to divide light from darkness. God saw that it was good. Evening came and morning came, the fourth day. God said, let the waters teem with living creatures and let birds fly above the earth within the vault of heaven. And so it was. God created great sea serpents and every kind of living creature with which the waters steam and every kind of winged creature. God saw that it was good God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful, multiply, and fill the waters of the seas, and let the birds multiply upon the earth. Evening came, and morning came, the fifth day. God said, Let the earth produce every kind of living creature, cattle, reptiles, and every kind of wild beast. And so it was. God made every kind of wild beast, every kind of cattle, and every kind of land reptile. God saw that it was good. God said, let us make man in our own image, in the likeness of ourselves, and let them be masters of the fish of the sea, the birds of heaven, the cattle, all the wild beasts, and all the reptiles that crawl upon the earth. God created man in the image of himself. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, and conquer it. Be masters of the fish of the sea, the birds of heaven, and all living animals on the earth. God said, See, I give you all the seed-bearing plants that are upon the whole earth, and all the trees with seed-bearing fruit. This shall be your food. To all the wild beasts, all birds of heaven, and all living reptiles on the earth, I give all the foliage of plants for food. And so it was. God saw all he had made, and indeed it was very good. Evening came, and morning came, the sixth day. 
Thus, heaven and earth were completed with all their array. On the seventh day, God completed the work he had been doing. He rested on the seventh day after all the work he had been doing. The word of the Lord. of the earth. Lord, send out your Spirit and renew the face of the earth. Bless the Lord, O my soul, O Lord my God, you are very great. You are clothed with honor and majesty, wrapped in light as with a garment. Lord, send out your Spirit and renew the face of the earth. You set the earth on its foundation so that it shall never be shaken. You cover it with the deep as with a garment. The water stood above the mountains. Lord, send out your Spirit and renew the face of the earth. You make springs gush forth in the valleys, they flow between the hills. By the streams the birds of the air have their habitation, they sing among the branches. Lord, send out your spirit, and renew the face of the earth. From your lofty abode you water the mountains. The earth is satisfied with the fruit of your work. You cause the grass to grow for the cattle and plants for people to use. Lord, send out your Spirit and renew the face of the earth. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Lord, send out your Spirit and renew the face of the Almighty, ever-living God, who are wonderful in the ordering of your works, may those you have redeemed understand that there exists nothing more marvellous than the world's creation in the beginning, except that at the end of the ages, Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. 
from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, "Why do you cry to me so? Tell the sons of Israel to march on. For yourself, raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea, and part it for the sons of Israel to walk through the sea on dry ground." I, for my part, will make the heart of, of the Egyptians so stubborn that they will follow them. So shall I win myself glory at the expense of Pharaoh, of all his army, his chariots, his horsemen. And when I have won glory for myself at the expense of Pharaoh and his chariots and his army. The Egyptians will learn that I am the Lord. Then the angel of the Lord, who marched at the front of the army of Israel, changed station and moved to their rear. The pillar of cloud changed station from the front to the rear of them and remained there. It came between the camp of the Egyptians. And the camp of Israel. The cloud was dark, and the night passed without the armies drawing any closer the whole night long. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove back the sea with a strong easterly wind all night, and it made dry land of the sea. The waters parted, and the sons of Israel. Went on dry ground, right into the sea, walls of water to right and to left of them. The Egyptians gave chase. After them, they went right into the sea. All Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. In the morning watch, the Lord looked down on the army of the Egyptians from the pillar of fire and of cloud. And threw the army into confusion. He so clogged their chariots' wheels that they would scarcely make headway. Let us flee from the Israelites! The Egyptians cried. The Lord is fighting for them against the Egyptians. Stretch out your hand over the sea, the Lord said to Moses, that the waters may flow back on the Egyptians and their chariots. And their horsemen. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and as day broke, the sea returned to its bed. The fleeing Egyptians marched right into it, and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the very middle of the sea. The returning waters overwhelmed the chariots and the horsemen of Pharaoh's whole army. Which had followed the Israelites into the sea, not a single one of them was left. But the sons of Israel had marched through the sea on dry ground, walls of water to right and to left of them. That day, the Lord rescues Israel from the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the shore. Israel witnessed the great act that the Lord had performed against the Egyptians, and the people venerated the Lord. They put their faith in the Lord and in Moses, his servant. It was then that Moses and the sons of Israel sang his song in honor of the Lord. Covered himself in glory. Let us sing to the Lord. He has covered himself in glory. I 
will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. Horse and rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my might, and he has become my salvation. This is my God, and I will praise him, my Father's God, and I will exalt him. Let us sing to the Lord. He has covered himself in glory. The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his army he cast into the sea. His picked officers were sunk in the Red Sea. Let us sing to the Lord. He has covered himself in glory. The floods covered them. They went down into the depths like a stone. <coughs> Your right hand, O Lord, glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shattered the enemy. Let us sing to the Lord. He has covered himself in glory. You brought your people in and planted them on the mountain of your own possession. The place, O oh Lord, that you made your abode, the sanctuary, O oh Lord, that your hands have established. The Lord will reign forever and ever. Let us sing to the Lord. He has covered himself in glory. Let us pray. O oh God, whose ancient wonders remain undimmed in splendour even in our day, for what you once bestowed on a single people, fleeing the, freeing them from Pharaoh's persecution by the power of your right hand, now you bring about as the salvation of the nations through the waters of rebirth. Grant, we pray, that the whole world may become children of Abraham and inherit the dignity of Israel's birthright. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord. Oh, come to the water, all you who are thirsty. Though you have no money, come. Buy corn without money and eat. And at no cost, wine and milk. Why spend money on what is not bread? your wages on what fails to satisfy? Listen, listen to me, and you will have good things to eat, 
and rich food to enjoy. Pay attention, come to me. Listen, and your soul will live. With you, I will make an everlasting covenant out of the favors promised to David. See, I have made of you a witness to the peoples, a leader and a master of the nations. See, you will summon a nation you never know. Those unknown who will come hurrying to you for the sake of the Lord your God, of the Holy One of Israel, who will glorify you. Seek the Lord while he is still to be found. Call to him while he is still near. Let the wicked man abandon his way, the evil man his thoughts. Let him turn back to the Lord who will take pity on him, to our God who is rich in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, my ways not your ways. It is the Lord who speaks. Yes, the heavens are as high above earth as my ways are above your ways, my thoughts above your thoughts. Yes, as the rain and the snow come down from the heavens and do not return without watering the earth, making it yield and giving growth to provide seed for the sower and bread for the eating. So the word that goes from my mouth does not return to me empty without carrying out my will and succeeding in what it was sent to do. The word of the Lord. salvation you will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation surely God is my salvation I will trust and will not be afraid for the Lord God is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. Give thanks to the Lord, call on his name. Make known his deeds among the nations. Proclaim that his name is exalted. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. Sing praises to the Lord, for he has done gloriously. Let this be known in all the earth. Shout aloud and sing for joy, O royal Zion. For great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, sole hope of the world, who by the preaching of your prophets unveiled the mysteries of this present age, graciously increase the longing of your people, for only at the prompting of your grace do the faithful progress in any kind of virtue. Through Christ our Lord. Reading from the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord was addressed to me as follows. Son of man, the members of the house of Israel used to live in their own land, but they defiled it by their conduct and actions. I then discharged my fury at them because of the blood they shed in their land and the idols with which they defiled it. I scattered them among the nations and dispersed them in foreign countries. I sentenced them as their conduct and actions deserved. And now they have profaned my holy name among the nations where they have gone so that people say of them, these are the people of the Lord, they have been exiled from his land. But I have been concerned about my holy name, which the house of Israel has profaned among the nations where they have gone. And so, say the house of Israel, the Lord says this, I am not doing this for my sake, house of Israel, but for the sake of my holy name, which you have profaned among the nations where you have gone. I mean to display the holiness of my great name, which have been profaned among the nations, which you have profaned among them. And the nation will learn that I am the Lord. It is the Lord who speaks when I display my holiness for your sake before their eyes. Then I am going to take you among, from among the nations and gather you together from all the foreign countries and bring you home to your own land. I shall pour clean water over you and you will be cleansed. I shall cleanse you of all your defilement and all your idols. I shall give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I shall remove the heart of stone from your bodies and give you a heart of flesh instead. I shall put my spirit in you and make you keep my laws and sincerely respect my observances. You will live in the land which I gave your ancestors, you shall be my people, and I will be your God. The word of the Lord. Like a deer that longs for running streams, my soul longs for you, my God. Like a deer that longs for running streams, my soul longs for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and behold the face of God? Like a 
melody that longs for running streams. My soul longs for you, my God. I went with the throng and led them in procession to the house of God. With glad shouts and songs of thanksgiving, a multitude keeping festival. Like a deer that longs for running streams, my soul longs for you, my God. Oh, send out your light and your truth, let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Like a deer that longs for running streams, my soul longs for you, my God. Then I will go to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy. And I will praise you with a harp, O oh God my God. Like a deer that longs for running streams, my soul longs for you, my God. Let us pray. O God of unchanging power and eternal light, look with favour on the wondrous mystery of the whole Church and serenely accomplish the work of human salvation which you plan for all eternity. May the whole world know and see that what was cast down is raised up, what has become old is made new, and all things are restored in integrity through Christ, just as by him they came into being who lives and reigns forever and ever.
O God, who made this most sacred night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up in your church a spirit of adoption, so that, renewed in body and mind, we may render you undivided service. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. When we were baptised in Christ Jesus, we were baptised in his death. In other words, when we were baptised, we went into the tomb with him and joined him in death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the Father's glory, we too might live a new life. If in union with Christ, we have imitated his death, we shall also imitate him in his resurrection. We must realize that our former selves have been crucified with him to destroy this sinful body and to free us from the slavery of sin. When a man dies, of course, he has finished with sin. But we believe that having died with Christ, we shall return to life with him. Christ, as we know, having been raised from the dead, will never die again. Death has no power over him anymore. When he died, he died once for all. To sin, so his life now is in life with God. And in that way, you too must consider yourselves to be dead to sin, but alive for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Our reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. After the Sabbath and towards the dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdala and the other Mary went to visit the sepulchre. And all at once there was a violent earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled away the stone and sat on it. His face was like lightning, his robe white as snow. The gods were shaken, so frightened of him, that they were like dead men. But the angel spoke, and he said to the women, There is no need for you to be afraid. I know you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen, as said he would. Come, and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples he has risen from the dead. And now he is going before you to Galilee. It is there you will see him. Now I have told you. Filled with awe and great joy, the women came quickly away from the tomb and ran to tell the disciples. And there coming to meet him was Jesus. Greetings, he said. And the women came up to him and falling down before him, clasped his feet. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers that they will leave for Galilee. They will see him there. The Gospel of the Lord.
What did Mary Magdalene see when she entered the tomb of Jesus' burial? It was still dark, we were told in the Gospel, just before dawn. So what she saw came from the torch she would have been carrying. We can guess that she saw the place on which Jesus' dead body had been laid, by tradition a slab of flat stone. And she also saw the clothes with which his body had been wrapped. In the empty tomb, Mary saw evidence about the death of Jesus. Blood stains on the cloths and slab. Perhaps a lingering smell of death. But she had gone into the tomb not to see things about Jesus' death. She had gone in to be with Jesus in his death. However, there was no body to be seen, no evidence of Jesus himself. She saw this, his bodily absence, and in that she believed in his risen presence. All that had transpired over the three years Mary had known Jesus now made sense. The words he had spoken, the signs he had given, the actions he had taken. These pieces of his life with her and hers with him came together in that empty tomb. She saw and she believed. Mary was the faithful witness in every way. She was at the foot of the cross and accompanied Jesus in his suffering. She saw his death and his burial. She remained faithful in those lonely hours afterwards, coming in the dark to anoint and to be with him. And she was the first to encounter Jesus, gloriously risen. When all others had given up, Mary Magdalene believed. And in believing, she could not but tell this to others. Mary showed how to believe in Jesus' resurrection. She did not keep it to herself, but to tell others, whoever would listen. If ever there was a trustworthy witness that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead, then it is Mary Magdalene who shows and tells us that it is true. Today, there are very many who do not believe this. Contrary to the overwhelming evidence of Jesus' life and death, many do not believe in his resurrection. Maybe we are all just a little like this, unsure of witnesses, not able to see, overconfident about ourselves, unconvinced and unwilling to believe. 
to this, to us. The risen Jesus says what he said to Mary. Greetings. Do not be afraid. This is the gift of Jesus' resurrection. That we have not been left alone to face the hostility of the world. Jesus is with us in the midst of all that transpires in our lives. He greets us, holds us, remains with us. Jesus walks along the road of our lives, accompanying and assuring us of his presence. In his resurrection, Jesus gives encouragement, offers healing, shows the way to go. We are known and loved by him so that we can know and love like him. The resurrection God enacted in his Son opens the world to a horizon greater than anything we can manufacture for ourselves, taking us beyond those transient preoccupations that can consume our lives. Stepping into the resurrection of Jesus tears away the veils of darkness and opens us to the joy and the hope of life in him. That is what the resurrection of Jesus brings to us. If, like Mary Magdalene, we have the courage to see and to believe. Happy Easter. Who is to be baptized, please come forward. Dearly beloved, with one heart and one soul, let us all by our prayers come in the aid of this our brother, Gary, in his blessed hope, so that as he approaches the font of rebirth, the Almighty Father may bestow on him all of his merciful help. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy, Christ. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy, Holy Mary, Mother of God. Pray for us, Saint Michael. Pray for us, Holy Angels of God. Pray. Saint John the Baptist, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Peter and Saint Paul, pray for us. Saint Andrew, pray for us. 
Saint John, pray for us. Saint Mary Magdalene, pray for us. Saint Stephen, pray for us. Saint Ignatius of Antioch, pray for us. Saint Lawrence, pray for us. Saint Perpetua and Saint Felicity, pray for us. Saint Agnes, pray for us. Saint Gregory, pray for us. Saint Augustine, pray for us. Saint Athanasius, pray for us. Saint Basil, pray for us. Saint Martin, pray for us. Saint Benedict, pray for us. Saint Francis and Saint Dominic, pray for us. Saint Francis Xavier, pray for us. Saint John Vianney, pray for us. Saint Catherine of Siena, pray for us. Saint Teresa of Jesus, pray for us. Saint Mary of the Cross, my kid up. Pray for us, all holy men and women, saints of God. Pray for us, Lord, be merciful. Lord, deliver us, we pray, from all evil. Lord, deliver us, we pray, from every sin. Lord, from everlasting death, Lord, deliver us, we pray. By your incarnation, Lord, deliver us, we pray. By your death and resurrection, Lord, deliver us, we pray. By the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, Lord, deliver us, we pray. Be merciful to us sinners. Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. Bring this chosen one to new birth through the grace of baptism. Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. Make this font holy by your grace for the new birth of your children. Lord, we ask you to hear our Jesus, Son of the Living God, Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Christ, Be present by the mysteries of your great love and send forth the spirit of adoption to create the new peoples brought to birth for you in the font of baptism so that what is to be carried out by our humble service may be brought to fulfilment by your mighty power. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, who by invisible power accomplish a wondrous effect through sacramental signs, and who in many ways has prepared water, your creation, to show forth the grace of baptism, O God, whose spirit in the first moments of the world's creation hovered over the waters, so that the very substance of water would even then 
take to itself the powers of sanct- to sanctify. O God, who by the outpouring of the flood foreshadowed regeneration, so that from the mystery of one and the same element of water would come an end to vice and a new beginning of virtue. O God, who caused the children of Abraham to pass dryshod through the Red Sea so that the chosen people set free from slavery to Pharaoh would prefigure the people of the baptized. O God, whose son, baptized by John in the waters of the Jordan, was anointed with the Holy Spirit, and as he hung upon the cross, gave forth water from his side along with blood, and after his resurrection commanded his disciples, go forth, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Look now, we pray, upon the face of your church and graciously unseal for her the fountain of baptism. May this water receive by the Holy Spirit the grace of your only begotten Son, so that human nature, created in your image and washed clean through the sacrament of baptism, from all the squalor of the life of old, may be found worthy to rise to the life of newborn children through water and the Holy Spirit. May the water, by the power of the Holy Spirit, our Lord, we pray, come down through your Son into the fullness of this font, so that all who have been buried with Christ by baptism into death may rise again to life with him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. sin and evil and to profess your faith in God. Gary, do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? Do you renounce Satan, the author and the prince of sin? We anoint you with the oil of salvation in the name of Christ our Saviour. May he strengthen you with his power who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting?
Gary. Gary, I now baptise you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. a new creation and have clothed yourself in Christ. Receive in this baptismal garment and, and bring it unstained to the judgment seat of our Lord Jesus Christ so that you may have everlasting life. Amen. Please come forward now to receive this baptized light of Christ. Gary, you have been enlightened by Christ. Walk always as a light, child of that light and keep the flame of faith alive in your heart. When the Lord comes, may you go out to meet him with all the saints in the heavenly kingdom. Amen. Amen. Elizabeth Johnson, Ricky Kirkham, and Annie Salia, who are to be confirmed, please come forward. Firstly, my dearly baptised Gary, born again in Christ by baptism, you have become a member of Christ and of his priestly people. You are now joined by Rena, Elizabeth, Ricky and Annie, members of the church who have not yet be completed the path of Christian initiation. You are all now to be confirmed receive a share in the Spirit poured out upon the Apostles at Pentecost. The power of the Holy Spirit will make you more like Christ and strengthen you to be active members of the Church and to build up the body of Christ in faith and in love. All-powerful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by water and the Holy Spirit you freed your sons and daughters from sin and gave them new life. Send your Holy Spirit upon them to be their helper and guide. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of right judgment and courage, the spirit of knowledge and reverence. Fill them with the spirit of wonder and awe 
in your presence. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Gary, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Rena, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Ricky, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Elizabeth, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Annie, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. And now I invite you to stand to once again light your candles. And dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal Mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of light. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of our holy baptism by which we once renounce Satan and his works and promise to serve God in the Holy Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? I do. Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
My friends, in Christ, the empty tomb confirmed the faith of Peter and John and is a sign that life is stronger than death. Let us now offer our prayers of intercession. We pray for Pope Francis. May he serve the church with the tenderness of Jesus and show the compassion of Jesus to the whole world. We pray to the Lord. We pray for those baptized at the Easter Vigil and those received into full communion in the Catholic Church. May Jesus be their life from now onwards so that they will live in charity we pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for all in our archdiocese. May Archbishop Peter and all priests, deacons, religious and lay faithful serve in the spirit of the risen Jesus who brings hope to our world. We pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for persecuted Christians. May they live for Jesus with courage knowing that he has conquered all sin and division. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the sick and for all who have asked for our prayers. We pray for those who have died recently, especially Bill Erickson, and those whose anniversaries we remember at this time, especially Ivan Zekic and all our deceased families and friends. We pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, you, the one rejected by the people, have become the saviour of the world, the living sign of God's all-embracing mercy. Forgive sinners, heal our world, affirm our faith, you who live and reign forever and ever.
Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, we ask, O Lord, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings, that what has begun in the Paschal Mysteries may, by the working of your power, bring us to the healing of eternity. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks and to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this night, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb, who took away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, my brother auxiliary bishops, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, for they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them. For the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, 
and paying their homage to you, the eternal God living and true. Celebrating the no second night of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious and the Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, the spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Plectus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence and Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Daniel, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from the eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his eternal Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, our Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the many gifts you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of ser your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light and peace. To us also your servants, 
who though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Mussolinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetual Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Sylvia, and Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into your company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Saviour Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And in your spirit, let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this paschal sacrament one in mind and heart. Through Christ our Lord. behind the scenes to make, um, I'm not going to be long, you can stay standing. Um, it's, a long, it's a long church to the, this evening. Thank you to our, our musicians in particular, the, uh, our organist, our, the choir, who did a splendid job, I think, and the many cantors and other musicians uh, across the tritium. Thank you also to the many readers and um, Eucharist ministers and people that help behind the scenes, the sacristans and the the behind-the-scenes team uh, have been absolutely wonderful. Parish staff and, uh, of course, the, the cathedral household, thank you to all of you as well. Wishing you and your families a very happy and holy and safe Easter. Thank you. I might offer my own word of uh, thanks to all those who have been involved, but particularly to the... Um, to the, uh, the priests here in the parish and to Father Michael, especially as MC, keeping me under control, which is a good thing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Well done, goodness. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.
Two hours, thirty seven minutes. <laughs> that is that's a marathon. Oh shit. Dion, two hours, thirty eight minutes. Thanks for coming.